Okay, uh, today we're going to have a look at how to deal with a broken timing belt. What I have here is uh, an example of some damage that has been caused by a timing belt breaking at low speed and a few video clips as well of something that has had a little bit more punishment. The timing belt I've actually got here that I'm demonstrating, um, it didn't snap, it was shredded and you can see there's actually mud contamination. This is due to the fact that the drain plug was left um, was left out completely when the vehicle was off-roaded and waded. So uh, filthy water has got in here and mud and actually made the belt slip. And uh, the, the shredding that's happened here is because it's been caught up as the crank has still been revolving. Right, this is a crankshaft pulley bolt which holds on the crankshaft damper. If he's left loose, you'll end up with problems like stripped cam belts which in turn can lead to knackered engines. He's not kidding either. The amount of damage that can be caused by just leaving the bolt loose, you have uh, damage to the crank um, and to the timing belt which will wear on the, the casing. Same applies for any oil contamination. You'll find that the belt will slip or it will rot and then snap and this is a choice you don't have any oil leaks that has to be repaired. All right, get this out of the way and have a look at some of the damage. Damage that usually occurs, um, rockers. Okay, in this case, we have a snapped one. Let's see, clean snap, all right. This is cast, so it's um, taken the weakest point. This um, followed along the line will be um, the push rods which are all bent up and these are fairly sacrificial. At low speed you'll actually get away with um, just uh, low speed damage which is bent push rods. The higher the revolutions in the engine when the belt slips or breaks, the more damage you're actually going to occur as you can see the rocker shaft damaged. All of these bits need to be inspected. Now, here's a beauty and uh, this is uh, part of the cam follower. This is where the push rod sits on, and that has had a fairly good whack. You can see that. Um, push rod slid past it. Right, so this engine is going at quite a speed. This is where the uh, brass part actually fits in, and this roller runs along the camshaft. All right, so it's been lifted, and uh, this is the roller part of it. All right, this is robust. This won't get damaged. All right, and the sleeve actually fits in the cylinder block. It's inside here where the push rod sits on. This is the vital part, all right, and to a point it's uh, actually sacrificial. Now this bolt here is an indication you see on the cylinder block where it's bolted into. So you know where, where the position is of this, uh, all eight of these. To get at these you need to take the cylinder head off and slip these out and um, you can find these parts separately. We'll get them all second hand in one go. Going a bit further on, um, we're having a look at the pistons here. You can see the uh, valve mark on top of the pistons, okay, um, and corresponding valves that have been hitting the pistons. And this is inevitable simply because the uh, valves run so close to the pistons, you're only talking a matter of thousandths of an inch when the piston is at top dead center that you'll actually get some space that the valves are supposed to be shut okay what I'll say is that it is recoverable um, if you have had a Tommy belt break at low speed you're going to get away very lightly however if it's broken at the higher speeds then you're going to have to look a bit deeper I'm going to show you how to uh, inspect your components and um, basically reset your engine so you can put your timing belt back on and, and um, get yourself out of trouble. I'm removing the rocket cover to access the uh, top part of the engine. This we need to do to uh, inspect the rockers and the push rods. This one is fairly clean, it's had regular oil changes. Now you'll probably think when you look at this one, wow that's immaculate. Well it is because I drained all the oil out and cleaned it for the purpose of this video. So the first thing we really need to do is check the top end and then we're going to have to take the timing case front cover off to reveal the belt. 
or the lack of it now. I'll show you this. We happen to have found a snapped one. So look at that. We're going to have to lift the rocker shaft completely off. The rocker shaft is retained by five bolts. You've got one there, two, three, four, and five. Once these are slackened off, you can lift the unit completely out of the way. Best results is to actually use a deep 13mm socket. What we're looking at when we're lifting these out, okay, on the ends, front and back, we're looking at two half moons, which are rubber inserts. These retain all, so if you take them out, remember to put them back in. Right. I'm keeping this unit in one complete piece, and I'm leaving the bolts in on the rocker shaft as I lift it out. This retains it all. Remember these are held in with springs. So taking the push rods out next, and uh, I'll count these down, and you can see these are bent up. It's had a, a fair whack. The crank has been moving quite quickly. Okay, so we're taking all these out, and I'll get to this one, and it's got carbon on it. So we have a blown head gasket. The exhaust gases have been blowing past this point, so the head is actually going to have to come off. I'm not going to show you in this video. However, um, we're going to. This is something that is mindful when you're looking at components is to check them for other faults as well okay so now I've got the last one out you can see how bent they are okay the the last thing to do at the top here okay is to look for swarf we're looking for large pieces of metal like this okay it's important to uh, uh, stock check everything to make sure all the components are there that there's no bits floating about now I would recommend an oil change once you put the timing belt on there's also something you should be aware of the stem caps on the valves okay which um, are these there are eight of them one on each valve and they are quite small they can be lost um, you see eight here remove them keep them in order and put them back when you reassemble so, um, you can see the damaged components there. I went and bought myself a rocker shaft on eBay with a set of push rods. Now, the 200 and 300 TDI push rods only are the same part. Okay, so uh, after reassembling this, I'm happy that I can put that back on the vehicle. Now, what I'm going to show you here is the, uh, the old shaft springs and washers that are fitted um, rocker shafts you could possibly use again and reassemble something if you need to you can buy the parts separately all right 200 and 300 tdi parts are different as i said except for the push rods next job we're going to have to do is uh, with a torch something like what i've got which is a flexible one and i can get deep into the uh, cylinder block now we're going to have to check the cam followers Okay, now the followers themselves, they run on the camshaft, and the part you can see is actually very robust. It lifts up the uh, push rods, and it's actually this part here that might well have sustained some damage, depending on the speed of the engine. Okay, so looking at this one, remember what I said about the damage, this is split. Okay, so we're going to have a good look. You might well have to turn the uh, cam around so that you can lift up the uh, follower and we're looking for damage on the uh, bronze section. This inspection is vital. Um, if anything is damaged and you put the engine back together then you will find that the engine will fail again later and so uh, it's worth checking beforehand. Alright, under the uh, timing case front cover we have a set of pulleys which have uh, allowed to be run free. See, the belt is not there now, and it's been wrapped around the crankshaft. What we need to do is check the markers for the crankshaft, the camshaft, and the fuel injection pump. So, let's get rid of the uh, timing belt. This is no use to anybody now. Look at the state of that. That's uh, shredded to pieces. We took the rocker shaft off because the valves, as you can see, are actually protruding into the combustion area. 
Okay, with the cam lift on this, it's uh, impossible to turn anything around fully. So we've removed this, and I've also removed these four glow plugs to make sure that I have as least resistance as possible. So we're looking at the camshaft here. Um, you can see the lift, and uh, this is as free as a daisy. What we need to do is set it along with the fuel injection pump and the crankshaft. Now, we're looking at the fuel injection pump here, and uh, this slot, which I'm about to highlight, needs to have a peg put in it to lock the uh, pulley into the correct position. All right, so I'll slip that in there, and that is right. Okay, that's set correctly. Now I'll show you again, but I'm using a um, specific Land Rover design tool which goes into the same slot. All right. You have the option of using a drill, but as long as the dimensions are right. Now, what I have here is the um, correct tool, Land Rover made. Well, in fact, this is actually the Sealy tool, but the dimension is 9.5 millimeters. This one here is to um, make sure that the flywheel is in the correct position. And these tools are, are quite vital. All right, it goes in the drain plug of the uh, flywheel housing here. We'll come to that. What you need to do with the uh, pump pulley is actually loosen off the three bolts, which um, this is a locking plate. Now this plate holds the pulley onto the pump drive. Now you see these are two are set correctly at the moment. Okay, here's a vital bit of information you need to know about the uh, three pulleys. The crankshaft pulley rotates twice compared to one rotation of the camshaft and the FIP, fuel injection pump, pulleys. You need to know this information to understand the relationship between the pulleys. Okay, what we're going to be doing now is uh, setting the Maverick crank, as I like to, uh, to call it. This one would have gone absolutely berserk, and uh, resetting this, it's important to note that it is actually quite easy. There is a keyway on the front here which you need to remember will line up with the arrow above it okay now there are two slots in the flywheel top and bottom here as you can see okay now only one of those is correct to line these up all right i've got my finger pointing on this one um actually is where the timing pin goes down the bottom here okay and you can see on the left hand side is the other false one this bung plug here will help you what you can do is uh, crack it off, a 13mm spanner here, it's showing off my ratchet spanners, and underneath is a marker with two notches in, can you see that? Okay, now looking through the hole here, you can see that, that the crankshaft will be set at the correct position. The other way to see is you've got it at TDC on a web marker here on the front timing case. You could possibly set that okay this is piston at top dead center Look, it's had a dent put in this one all right so this will be right okay now the crankshaft is now set the timing pin is in in the correct slot all right don't just rely on finding a slot on the uh, flywheel here because it won't work okay now let's turn the engine back around again i know it's it's difficult because you'll have this in the vehicle however this way you can see exactly what's going on all right so all the pulleys are set now you can see the the markers here this is vital once you've got this you can put the timing belt on fitting of the timing belt we do need to have the injector pump pin fitted in place and it needs to be the correct size reason for this if you look at the uh, pulley here it needs to be loose all right the pump's actually locked and the drive's locked but not the pulley wheel so little tip or a trick that i've learned while doing a timing belt is to fit the adjustable idler um, loosely first before we go ahead with fitting the timing belt this will help hold the belt in place while we're fitting it Okay, now, fitting of the belt. This is um, quite easy. The advice here is that the tension that is on the 
static idler sword is actually the tension of the belt all right so you need to hold it pull it so it fits nicely you want no slack in that side okay and um, when we pull the belt over onto the fuel injection pump pulley it will move that's why we've left it loose okay we'll hold it just there um, what I need to explain to you is that the fuel injection pump pulley because it's slack it actually allows a little bit of movement so when you pull up the tension onto the belt that pulley will move just slightly round okay that will stop the camshaft and the crankshaft from moving and you've got to remember this is quite vital the pump has to be unlocked when you do this operation you can then nip it up when you've got the belt tension right so we've got the belt resting in place and I'm dropping the idler just slightly out of the way so I can get the rest of the belt on this I found is the best way of doing it I'm making sure that nothing slips and I'm gonna put the bolt into the idler center of the idler and tighten it up just nip it very slightly I can then adjust it to the correct tension this usually is a 13 mil um, socket that's required for this one so I'll whip this up quickly and then I'll use a, um, a special tool which I found really cheap to uh, adjust the tension now on the adjuster plate there is a, a half inch drive square and I'll use an extension on here okay that will fit in the hot in the slot there and I can pull the tension up this tool is uh, quite a cheap one from Draper and the figures for tightening this belt are on the screen there are two figures one for a new belt and one for a belt that you're going to refit right. now I pull this up tight to where it should be don't over tighten these because what will happen is it will it will ruin the uh, injection pump bearings and that will leak diesel okay very quickly so now what I need to do here is make sure that the drive for the pump lets me pull the pin in and out once I can do that I can tighten up the three locking bolts on the plate so I'm locking the pulley onto the hub of the uh, injector pump now the timing should be set for the pump exactly now where it should be okay so I can take the pin out and uh, it slides in and out that's what you need to do and not forgetting the uh, timing pin for the flywheel as well needs to be unlocked all right now the trick here and this is a professional piece of advice is wind your crank round twice which uh, the cam shaft and the fuel pump go around once in relation and the timing markers should line up exactly if everything is okay if the cam and the crank are out then the belt has too many teeth or too less teeth you've got to check this okay look cam shaft is in place and the fuel pump if that fits in nicely if that pushes in that's okay if it's not you can slightly adjust it but it's the crankshaft you need to check all right okay making sure that the crankshaft's correct the camshaft uh, marker is right and you have the timing pin back in for the fuel pump and do the three bolts which lock the locking plate the second thing you need to do is to readjust the uh, tension on the uh, idler this is important once you set it right then that should be alright for the uh, next five years or 100,000 miles depending what you need let me just get this right okay you can see the slot down in there all right there's not much tension on this there's not much tension on this belt but enough to make sure that it doesn't flap about anywhere last thing you should do is uh, check the, uh, the pump timing all right the pin should slide in and out easily no problem all right and that leaves you to uh, be assured that the pump timing is all right if it's not then readjust it and then do up these bolts again <coughs> next piece of advice here is uh, torque everything up I know that we've tightened the bolts up but use the torque settings they're provided on the screen and uh, you have your static idler here 
which I actually did before I fitted the belt on. Okay, once I'd fitted that, then just nipped it up. Um, the same thing goes for any other um, rotary parts that you've undone. This one here, okay, for the pump, you've got three, and then your adjustable idler as well. The bolt needs to be done up. Okay, and there you have it. All right, last bit of advice is don't forget to retrieve your tools after a job. I know we've got to get the timing case cover back on. However, don't forget this pin, or if you have any locking device um, in there, make sure you retrieve it. One thing to consider is uh, when you fit your um, rocker shaft. If you're going to fit it before you fit the timing belt, then you have to have the uh, pulleys in place, and then you can push down the, uh, the rocker shaft into place and and take it from there otherwise you can put the timing belt on and then fit the rocker shaft however what you've got to be aware of is that without the rocker shaft in place you'll find that the camshaft itself is actually quite loose so I would advise setting the timing pulleys first and then putting your, your rocker shaft on you can then put your timing belt on wind it round reset it and then you can put your front cover back on and then after that you can finally do your valve clearances. Okay, refitting the rocker shaft. Um, these caps here from that are on top of the valves, I would recommend putting new ones on. It doesn't hurt and they're very cheap. Now the rocker shaft itself, worth inspecting. The um, wearing faces here, just make sure they're not dented too badly this is quite important the bushes here that are on the rockers themselves it's actually cheaper to buy the whole rocker than to replace the bush so keep that in mind if they have too much play on them when it comes to assembly you need to make sure that the components that move are oiled okay because they will be dry when you put them back together when you put this engine back together what we do at the top of the head here we have a dowel peg now this is vital, this has got to be in place, alright? This dowel peg corresponds with the rocker shaft on one end and it has to be fitted such, okay, you see that? Right, so don't forget that that needs to be there. So also, we'll need to drop oil onto the uh, top of the valves as well, just remembering that the uh, rockers make contact at this point. So fitting the push rods in, we have eight of these and they need to be fitted in a fashion so they they are actually on the top of the uh, cam follower I've dropped a little bit of oil down the well there and I'm also going to oil the tops of these just to make sure that they'll be alright when the engine first starts once the oil's up that's alright and then it'll leave oil there but always when you're rebuilding an engine with dry parts you, you need to have oil on it you don't have to be too excessive, just a, it's a helping hand as they say. We're going to locate this, as I showed you with this part here. Okay, don't forget that you have oil being pushed up into the uh, rocker shaft, so that's important. We need to make sure that the rockers sit properly. They fit into the uh, push rods and that they fit evenly across the whole uh, top of the engine. Um, you need to do this and make sure they're all square before you start to bolt this down. Now, there is a tightening sequence with this and uh, basically you just work it bit by bit to get them to, to pull down onto the valves, okay? Uh, we want to make sure that the valves themselves are in contact with the uh, the rockers and uh, there is a little bit of movement because they do move you want them as central as possible you see here where's a spring okay you have washers and the washers must be in contact um, keep it how it was when you stripped it and then see how you get on you definitely need to make sure that the rocker sits central to the valve you can adjust this by putting thicker or thinner washers in there You can see as you push this down, it's going to be need to be pulled down quite considerably. All right, so we have a uh, 
10 mil socket here and 13 mil for the uh, the other bolts okay so i'm going to progressively pull these down um centers first obviously all right and you do this gently because don't forget you're screwing into aluminium here all right once you get resistance against the valves you're going to have a couple that need pushing down and uh, yeah it's a 13 mil on this side okay now i do this gently now once you've pulled it up and nipped it just slightly you'll then want to use a torque wrench um, the settings will come up on the screen at some point they are bolted down but it's not torqued yet okay so uh, torque wrench settings are on the screen here now there's no special device here I'm, I'm using a click torque wrench and the bolts themselves are not um, torqued down very tightly at all okay it's uh, just be aware of the torque settings on this so pull them up and then click all right um, do all five I work from the uh, center outwards usually uh, but it doesn't matter as long as the torque setting and the torque pressure is even right the way across the bar Right, so the last thing on this torque wrench, while I'm not using it, is just let the spring off, alright? It leaves this torque wrench more accurate for longer.